Hello and welcome to the Bright Light Chiropractic Orientation Class. Most people that come to the office don't know what chiropractic is or what it's about. Most people have a vague idea that chiropractic is a way to treat back or stiff necks or headaches. While those things often go away under chiropractic care, that's never a good reason to go to a chiropractor. Some people say, I believe in chiropractic. Other people say, I don't believe in chiropractic. Chiropractic doesn't require your belief. Frankly, I don't care if you believe it or not. I do care that you understand it. And that is why we're gonna take some time so that I can explain it to you today. Chiropractic is about your life. It's about your health. Chiropractic is about living longer and living better. Improving the quality and quantity of not only your life, but of your family's life. Chiropractic is big stuff. It's not about back aches and stiff necks. I know people told you that it was about back aches and stiff necks, but it is not. Chiropractic is about life. And for that reason, I asked you to come to this class today. This class is the most important thing I do. It's more important than the adjustment. It's more important than anything else that happens here. If I can get through to you today, if I effectively communicate to you what chiropractic is really about, I can change your life, your family's life, and the health of our community. And that is the most important thing I can do for you and for our community. Chiropractic is based upon the life principle or the innate principle. The life principle is one of the laws of the universe. It's just like another law of the universe. Yep, like gravity. The life principle is just as valid as the law of gravity. We can deny it if we want to, but like it or not, the law of gravity is always in effect. If you jump out of a third story window, whether you say I believe in gravity or I don't believe in gravity, you're still gonna splatter on the ground. Chiropractic is based on those kinds of laws which are immutable and unchangeable whether we believe them or not. The life principle is a term based upon the whole concept of life. What is life exactly? Can you go to the deli and buy two pounds of life and a pound of salami? Of course you can. It's not a tangible thing. But just because it's not tangible doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. If we go to the morgue and I give you a knife and I allow you to cut my finger, cut my finger, and then I allow you to cut one of the cadaver's fingers exactly the same way. We put a Band-Aid on it so that we protect that wound, and then we come back a week or so later. Who heals? Is my finger healed? Is the cadaver's finger healed? Of course, my finger's healed, but the cadaver's finger is not. So what's the difference? What do I have that the cadaver didn't? that that dead person doesn't have. The only thing different, I've got the, that, that dead person's got the same tissues, glands, organs, all the tissues are the same as my finger, but I have life and the cadaver doesn't. It's life that heals, nothing else. If we're ever gonna understand what chiropractic is about, we must first get some insight into what life is about. The best insight into life comes from looking at the very beginnings of life. In the very beginning, a male cell and a female cell come together in the mother to form the very first cell. And we all know how that happens, that's beyond the scope of this class. But that one cell that it forms has 100% life. Everything that this human being is ever going to be is contained within this one cell. All the trillions of cells to follow come from this one cell with 100% life. That one cell will divide into two cells and then into four and then eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, and so on until eventually there are enough cells to form the rudimentary brain, which is the first thing that forms in the body. 
That rudimentary brain has 100% life. That 100% life that will supply the body for the rest of the growth of that life. That one cell, that rudimentary brain, turns into the rudimentary brain and then starts to form these little cords off of it. These little strands form. And they, that will eventually become the spinal cord. Or the spinal cord come the spinal nerves. And it continues to, to multiply, the cells multiply and continue to grow until the brain and the nervous system is formed. Right at about four weeks, little buds form at the end of those nerves. Those buds will become the future glands, organs, and tissues in the body. Eventually, those buds might form an arm. Maybe this one will form a foot and a heart. Until eventually, the buds form all the organs, glands, and tissues. And in just 280 days, about 40 weeks, a full-term baby emerges. And that baby has a condition, the condition where its glands, organs, and tissues are functioning normally. That full-term baby has 100% life. And this child has that thing that every single person comes into my office looking for, even if you didn't know it and you weren't aware of it at the time you came in. When people come to my office, they tell me about their sore back, their neck pain, terrible headache. They probably noticed I wasn't interested in those symptoms. And the reason I was, wasn't very interested is because chiropractic is not a way to treat those things. Chiropractic is a way to make your body healthy. And when your body is healthy, it knows how to treat those things. So what I want people, what I want to see people leave my office with is health, a condition where your glands, organs, and tissues are functioning normally and you exhibit health. When we talk about health in chiropractic, we talk about it a little differently than you're used to. Most people think that health is when someone is feeling good. Do you know anybody that maybe felt good and died suddenly? Maybe a stroke or a heart attack? They felt great, but they're awfully dead to, for a healthy person. Feeling good doesn't always equate to being healthy. So obviously health is something other than feeling good. We can feel wonderful and be on the verge of death. We can feel absolutely terrible and be completely healthy. So I'm getting a little hungry. How about we go out and get some Chinese food? I'm buying, don't worry, but I get to choose. We're gonna have lo mein. We get the lo mein to the table, but unfortunately we didn't get just lo mein. They also served us some to mein, which is food poisoning. After the meal, we go home and I am just sick as a dog. I'm puking up my brains. And you go home, you're happy. You feel great, nothing wrong. And we go to sleep and in the morning, you wake up in the hospital and I wake up to a close call. What happened? Well, you felt great but I was actually healthy. You look good, but I was healthy. My body knew to get rid of those toxins that were inside. And because you didn't get rid of the toxins, even though you felt good before you went to sleep, those toxins were in there making you very unhealthy and you wind up in the hospital where I wake up to that close call feeling fine. So just because you feel good doesn't mean you're healthy. And just because you feel bad doesn't mean you're unhealthy. It just means that you are alive. So this is what I really want you to have when you leave my office, true health, not this feel good, feel bad thing. I want you, your, all your tissues functioning normally and for you to have true health. 
truth health is not so much that you feel good, not so much that, but that you feel bad. It's just that you are good, that you are functioning at your peak efficiency and adapting to your surroundings and environment. That's what health really is. It's the ability to adapt to your environment. And the better you adapt, the longer you live. It's true that all things, when they adapt better to their environment, live better. So what I want for you is true health. So it brings up a question. Will true health get rid of your backache? And the answer is, I don't know. It may, but if it doesn't, you'll be the healthiest person in the United States with the back pain. Do you see the bigger idea here? This is about life and health. This is not about feeling good or feeling bad. Medicine is about feeling, making you feel good or feel bad. Chiropractic is about life. So let's talk a little bit about those buds that formed at the end of the nerves during development. They also produce a series of 24 bones that travel up and down the middle part of your back. These bones are the spinal bones and they're called vertebra. These vertebra surround the spinal cord and protect it. Each one of the nerves that branch off the spinal cord and come out between those vertebra are now called spinal nerves. So let's stop and take a second look at a, the spine together. Your spine is made up of three areas, the cervical, the neck, the thoracic, which is blue, the middle back, the lumbar, which is your lower back. There's also the sacrum, which is orange. Each one of the vertebra are these individual bones in your spine. They're separated by these shock absorbers called discs. Inside, protected inside the spine, is your spinal cord. Coming out from between those bones are the spinal nerves. And these nerves go out and control and coordinate all the organs, glands, and tissues in your body. When the bones in your spine don't line up with one another, they pinch the nerves, and it stops the brain from communicating with your body. Nothing can happen in the body unless the brain, via the nervous system, tells it to happen. If you leave this class and go eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich tonight, while you're asleep, your stomach and intestines will break this peanut butter and jelly sandwich down. The chemicals will pass into your bloodstream. Your body will use those chemicals to create new organs, glands, and tissues, and all this happens under the direction of the brain and the nervous system. So these little bumps on the back of your spine are called spinous process. And when they don't line up, when the bone moves out of its normal alignment, it actually pinches the nerve, the spinal nerve that's coming out. When a bone goes out of its normal alignment with the one above and below, we call that a vertebral subluxation. Let me show you a better picture of that. This is a subluxation. It's a bone that's gone out of its normal alignment and puts pressure on a nerve. It interferes with the brain's ability to send messages down to all the glands, organs, and tissues of your body. What if we leave the bone out of alignment, leave it subluxated for weeks or months or years? Well, first, the tissues will get red and swollen. Eventually, there could be permanent nerve damage if the bone is left out of alignment for a long enough period of time. So this is a vertebral subluxation. Usually there's more than one in the spine at any given time, but it's a misalignment of the bone that puts pressure on the nerve. What causes that bone to move out of its normal alignment? Well, the answer is stress. Mental, physical, and chemical stress. The things we think, the way we move, and the chemicals in our environment, including 
the temperature outside, anything that will tighten the muscles and pull the bones out of their normal alignment. So the cause of all disease in the body actually is stress. Stress causes the muscles to get tight. If the muscles get tight next to your spine, it pulls the vertebra out of line and causes subluxation. Subluxations in and of themselves because they're uncomfortable often cause stress. Subluxations can also cause more muscle spasm and they can lead to dysfunction in the body, the body not moving well. If the body doesn't move well for a long enough period of time, doesn't work well, it leads to a disease, dis-ease, when the body is not at ease. And when your body is not at ease for a long enough period of time, when you're diseased, it leads to more stress and it creates this cycle. Chiropractors break the cycle here so that your body can once again heal better and express more life, adapt to its environment. So there's less than 100% life flowing along a nerve when there is a subluxation present. In other words, if the brain is able to supply your cells of the body represented by this light bulb, it would be very, very bright. Yes, very bright, I'll hide that. And if there's a subluxation, it'll just get a little bit less bright, just a little bit less bright. Maybe 90% of that electricity is going now to, in this case, to the heart. And you don't feel too bad. Maybe your heart beats a little faster, or maybe a little slower, but you still feel good. But if you leave it there long enough, there's more pressure on the nerve. And as time goes by, you feel a little tired, maybe a little chest pain. Maybe you don't have enough money to go to the doctor to have it checked. Maybe you don't have enough money to come to the chiropractor to get your nervous system checked. So you just try to ignore it. And eventually the nerve is pinched so much that the heart starts not functioning well. And by that time, it may be too late to go see the chiropractor. When there's a subluxation in your body, it creates a new condition in your body where the glands, organs, and tissues become sick. The tissues break down and begin to die and you, it creates symptoms. Those symptoms lead to dis-ease. You're not feeling well. At this point, there's nothing I can do. You might be on the verge of a heart attack. That's not the time to come to a chiropractor. Now you need to see your medical doctor or get to the ER to treat those symptoms, to, get, to help you in that critical case. Chiropractors only locate and correct vertebral subluxations by gently moving the bone, adjusting it back into its normal position. When we do that, it restores this condition in the body where the tissues, glands, and organs begin to function normally and true health should ensue. Why don't I say it does ensue? Well, all we can do as chiropractors is put the bones back into their normal alignment, remove the subluxation. But whether you get well or not depends on your body's ability to heal. I don't heal you. There's only been one person that healed and they were crucified and I'm not him. I locate and correct vertebral subluxations with an adjustment and hopefully when I do, 100% life will flow over that nerve and the body will begin to heal itself. Hopefully, it will recreate a condition in your body where the tissues, glands, and organs begin to function normally and hopefully, true health will ensue. 
So when we talk about chiropractic, we're talking about your ability to survive and thrive in life. There's nothing more important than life. If chiropractic is a matter of life, then how do we set a fee for this? Suppose you need to be seen, but you didn't budget the money for that day, that day's adjustment. I guess you don't come in and you leave the subluxation and you stay home to be sick or God forbid die. Does any human being have the right to do that to another human being? I don't think so. So we had to create a fee system that in some way acknowledges that life and death thing about chiropractic. My pledge is to provide a quality chiropractic service at a reasonable fee. We had to create a financial system by which you can get the care that you need for one low affordable fee. And I think that we've done that. Once you become a member in our office and set up a monthly recurring auto charge to a credit card, a debit card, or even an HSA card, you're all set. And you can come to have your spine checked as often as you want to. You pay it one low monthly fee. You can schedule your visit online to be seen in our office at your appointed time, or you can walk in and wait for an opening. There's no payment due at the front desk. You've already paid ahead for the month and you just check in and you're all set. The beauty of our membership system is that payment is coupled with our Polestar adjusting technology. And you can stop in any time to have your spine scanned. You can do it frequently just to see if you're subluxated. It only takes a minute to adjust your spine if we find that you are out of alignment. If we don't find a subluxation, you're good to go. And you can leave the office without an adjustment knowing that your spine is as healthy as possible and your brain is fully connected to all the tissue cells. For best results in a chiropractic office, be regular. The key to success in chiropractic is regular care. If you know anyone that's been to a chiropractor and they've been dissatisfied, ask them how long they went and how frequently, how frequently they went. Irregularity is the cause of dissatisfaction with chiropractic. Come to our office regularly on a weekly basis to get the best results and to maintain a healthy spine. Anything that's good for your health requires time and repetition brushing your teeth, eating healthy foods, exercise, sleep, prayer, and chiropractic is no different. It requires time and repetition. I'm gonna ask humbly, please, 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 refer your friends and family, at least refer them to this orientation class, because whether you know it or not, you are your brother's keeper. You now know something that can save a life or change life. So tell it to other people that you care about. Who should be under chiropractic care? Well, my family and I get checked at least once a week. My children were adjusted minutes after they were born. If you have a spine, you should have it checked. Our mission is to detect and correct subluxations in a fun, safe, and caring environment, to restore and maintain true health of our community, beginning with you, your family, and your friends. So how often should you come in? Once a week. Some people require more frequent, frequent care for the first three to four weeks to re-educate the muscles that are holding the vertebra out of alignment so that we can re-educate them to create a better alignment. Once a week thereafter is usually sufficient if you're not under severe stress. But chiropractic really works best when we check a child's spine the moment that they're born and correct the subluxation so that they don't develop chronic subluxations. And then we just check them once a week for the rest of their lives so that they can grow up strong and in true health. Unfortunately, most people wait until they're falling apart before they come into our office. And then we have to do some reconstruction on them. That's the reason for more fre frequent care for the first few weeks of your care, and then you can taper it down. So how long should you come to the office? Well, you've heard this, 
once you go to a chiropractor, you have to go forever. We like to put it a little differently. You only have to go as long as you want to be healthy. You want to end up where you were before we started? Stop coming in. Simple as that. This is a vertebral subluxation. It creates a condition in your body where the tissues, glands, and organs become sick. The tissues break down and die and create symptoms that lead to disease. Vertebral subluxations are corrected with a gentle adjustment and that restores a condition where the tissues, glands, and organs function normally and hopefully true health will ensue. So how do you begin your health journey? Set up your individual membership in our office today. Schedule your adjustments. Be regular. Refer your friends and family to our office. We want to welcome you to Bright Light Chiropractic. We're looking forward to taking care of you, your family, and your friends. And we're looking forward to restoring true health in our community. Have a great day.